பக்தி வைபவ பயிற்சிகளையும் பழகி வருகிறார்கள் So there's a lot of experience on Maharaj preaching. He's also a senior disciple of his Isipati and Swami Shri Prabhupada. So they are very fortunate. So after Maharaj class, maybe we can have uh, some memory of his Grace uh, is Bhakta Roshan who have just passed away and today was he was his funeral given also some prashad for him to this feast on behalf of his family. Maharaj Arghari Sarpani Vittu Parage Sridhi Nairam Namai Vittu Pridha Bhakta Roshan Arghari Sridhi Smirti Nikarvu Nadai Parum Adodu Indraya Nyari Vrindin பிரசாதம் அவருக்கு சமர்ப்பணம் செய்யப்படும் அத்தியாயம் ஒன்று பதம் இருபத்தி நான்கு இப்போது மகாராஜ் அவர்கள் உடங்குவார்கள் ஜய ராதா I got it. 
जय श्री श्री गोविंदाय की जय कृष्ण कनलाल की जय जय जगत विश्लभ पाद की जय 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 गोपी मनंदी हरि हरि बो ओम नमो भगवते वसुदेवाय 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 We're reading Srimad Bhagavad Gita as it is, Chapter One, Observing the Armies, Text Number Twenty Four. Indra Nam Bhagavad Gita ni unma yu reveal mudal atyayam irvati nanda vudu padam mudal atyayi tin karipu or karatil padai karai yavanital. Sanjaya uvacha. Sanjaya uvacha. एवं उक्तो ऋषिकेशो गुडकेशन भारत सेनोर्मध्ये स्थपत्यथोथम संजाया उवाचा मुक्तो ऋषिकेशो गुटकेशन भारत सेनोर्भ्ये स्थापयथम संजाया मुक्तो गुडकेशन भारत सेनोर्भ्ये स्थापयथम संजाया उवाचा उक्त ऋषिकेशो गुडकेशन भारत सेनोर्भ्ये स्थापयथम
Priti Janani Mataji, I'd like to chant. Malini. Sanjaya Uvacha. Sanjaya Uvacha. Sanjay said. Sanjay said. Purinam. Evam. Evam. Thus. Yuvari. Prukta. Address. Purinam. Rishi Kesha. Lord Krishna. Krishna Bhagavan. Guda Keshena. By Arjuna. Arjuna Nal. Bharata. Bharata. O descendant of Bharat. Bharata Kula Tonrele. Senayo. Of the armies. Padayaliki. Upayo. Upayo. Both. Iri. Madhye. Madhye. In the midst. In the midst. Naduvi. Sapayatva, placing, Nirithinar. Rath Uttamam, Rath Uttamam. The, finest the finest chariot, Viga Armayana Radham. Translation, Sanjaya said, O descendant of Bharat, having thus been addressed by Arjuna, Lord Krishna, drew up the fine chariot in the midst of the armies of both parties. Purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, Srila Prabhupada. In this verse, Arjuna is referred to as Gudakesh. Gudakesh means sleep, and one who conquers sleep is called Gudakesha. Oh, oh I, I'm sorry, it should be Gudaka. Yeah, Gud, Gud, Gudaka means sleep, and one who conquers sleep is called Gudakesha. Sleep also means ignorance. So Arjuna conquered both sleep and ignorance because of his friendship with Krishna. As a great devotee of Krishna, he could not forget Krishna even for a moment because that is the nature of a devotee. Either in waking or in sleep, a devotee of the Lord can never be free from thinking of Krishna's name, form, qualities and pastimes. Thus a devotee of Krishna can conquer both sleep and ignorance simply by thinking of Krishna constantly. This is called Krishna consciousness or samadhi. As Rishikesh or the director of the senses and mind of every living entity, Krishna could understand Arjuna's purpose in placing the chariot in the midst of the armies. Thus he did so and spoke as follows. Om Magyana Timirandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chatsurun Milikanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Manobhistam Stapitam yena bhutale, Swayam rupa kadamayam 
dadati swapadantikam vandeham shri guru shri yatapadakamalam shri guru vaishnavam scha shri rupam sakrajatam sahagana ragnatam vitam tam sajevam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parjana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakanitam Sya He Krishna Karana Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namastate Tapta Kanta Nagorangi Radhe Vrinda Vaneshwari Vrishabhanu Sate Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vanchaka Pata Rubyascha Kripa Sindhu Vaye Vacha Patitam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gorbhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So this is of course the very beginning of the Bhagavad Gita, the first chapter. We're hearing a description of the battlefield and how Lord Krishna has come on the battlefield driving the chariot for Arjuna. அதாவது குருஷேத்திர போர்க்களத்தில் எப்படி கிருஷ்ண பகவான் தமது தேரை நகர்த்துகின்றார் என்பதை விவரிக்கின்றது Lord Krishna is so kind that he becomes the servant of his devotee like Arjuna. பகவான் ஸ்ரீ கிருஷ்ணர் மிகவும் கருணை வாய்ந்தவர் அர்ஜுனன் போன்ற அவரது பக்தர்களுக்கு எப்படி அவர் சேவை புரிகின்றார் என்பதை நாம் காணுகின்றோம் இவ்வாறு அர்ஜுனனுக்கு தேரோட்டியாக வந்த கிருஷ்ண பகவான் தம்மை ஒரு தேரோட்டி என்று பக்தர்கள் அழைப்பதிலும் அவர் ஆனந்தமடைந்தார் நமக்கு கிருஷ்ணர் ஆலயம் இருக்கின்றது ஆயிரத்தி தொள்ளாயிரத்தி எழுபதாம் ஆண்டு நிறுவப்பட்டது அதற்கு சில பிரபுபாதர் அவர்கள் ராதா பார்த்தசாரதி என்று பெயரிட்டுள்ளார்கள் மிக சிறந்த ரதம் என்று குறிப்பிடப்பட்டுள்ளது கிருஷ்ண பகவான் செலுத்திய ரதம் சாதாரண ரதம் என்று அது மிகவும் சிறந்த ஒரு ரதம் நீங்களும் உங்களுடைய என்று பல விதமான ரதத்தில் வருகின்றீர்கள் In Malaysia, Perdoya, right? Malaysian cars. So Krishna comes on the battlefield and he's got a very special chariot which had been given by the fire god, Agni. So Krishna 
comes, he's not an, just an ordinary chariot, not just driving any ordinary chariot, because Krishna is the Supreme Lord, he is Rishikesh, and he is driving this very special chariot. Krishna is Parma Purusha Bhagavan, Rishikesh is the Supreme Lord, and he is driving this very special chariot. So, Lord Krishna is known as Rishikesh, meaning the, the master of the senses. We all have senses, and Lord Krishna is the proprietor of all of these senses. And Arjuna, he is called in this particular verse, he is addressed as Buddha Kesha. And it's mentioned that Arjuna had conquered sleep. He didn't need to sleep. Just like Lord Rama went into exile with Mother Sita and Lakshman, and when Lord Rama lay down to take rest, Lakshman would not sleep. Lakshman would be the guard, and he didn't sleep. He conquered sleep. And we see also, of course, in the lives of Lord Chaitanya and his devotees, how at one point they decided not to sleep at night. Lord Chaitanya gathered all the devotees. I think the children have to be controlled, otherwise it creating a lot of disturbance. Yeah, they can go downstairs and or there's up, it's a big temple. We have other places they can go. But uh, Arjuna, uh, I was talking about sleep. Uh, oh, Lord Chaitanya decided that why we should sleep every night. That better we just have kirtan all night. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Nikar, Yen Bhavur Iravu Nam Tunda Vendu, Ur Iravu Nam Mulumayaga Kirtanam Sayo. We have nice kirtan ears, we have Bhavan Prabhu, we have Kaviraj, and we have. Where's that Vrindavan Vasikon? The boy from Vrindavan? <laughs> There's another boy came from Vrindavan here tonight. So many kirtan ears, we can have nice kirtan. And here's another kirtan here come. Our Malaysian kirtan here. Very nice. So we can have kirtan all the night. You see, no need to sleep. Just like I remember when Prabhupada had some health problem, he asked all of us to do all of the temples. We were doing 24-hour kirtan for Prabhupada's health. And we would have schedules and we would all come and do kirtan in the middle of the night. We come, the whole night Kirtan was going on, the Bhutti, the whole night, the whole day, the holy name was being chanted. So when we conquer over sleep, then you also conquer over that ignorance. And Srila Prabhupada would sometimes say that sleep is like death. 
வந்தாவனோஸ்வாமிகளும் அவர்கள் உறக்கத்தையும் உண்ணுவதையும் வென்றிருக்கின்றனர் Shri Prabhupada said he said well when he was still young he gave up mating and defending and then in his old age he also conquered and gave up practically eating and sleeping ivare prabhupada avargal ilavayathil uravu kolvadayum thanne tarkaathu kolvadayum avar thurandirundar adhe pole tamade vayodhika vayathil உறக்கத்தையும் அறியாமையும் அவர் வென்றிருந்தார் மிருகங்களின் காரியம் என்னவென்றால் உண்ணுவது உறங்குவது தற்காப்பது உடல் உறவு கொள்வது ஹியூமன் லைஃப் இஸ் நாட் மென் ஜஸ்ட் ஓன்லி ஃபார் ஈட்டிங் ஸ்லீப்பிங் மேக்கிங் அண்ட்ஸ் ஆனால் மனித வாழ்வின் நோக்கம் என்பது இவ்வாறு மிருகங்களைப் போல உண்டு உறங்கி உடலுறவு கொண்டு தன்னை தற்காத்துக் கொள்வது மட்டுமல்ல அதற்கு மேலான நோக்கம் உண்டு பரம்பொருளை தேடி உணர்வதுதான் மனித பிறவியின் நோக்கம் பட் இஃப் வி ஸ்பெண்ட் லாட் ஆஃப் டைம் ஸ்லீப்பிங் then our consciousness will become dull and we will have no thought about the higher purpose of life ivvaru naam nedinaram urangikondirundal namadhu sindhanai ivvaru uyarnda nokkai adaivadharku sadagamaga amaiyadu so it's very important that we should regulate not but of course we're not able to imitate great souls and stop sleeping but at least we should regulate our sleep நிச்சயமாக மகாத்மாக்கள் போன்று நாம் நித்திரையை முழுமையாக துறக்க முடியாது ஆனால் நமது நித்திரையை அல்லது உறக்கத்தை நம்மால் கட்டுப்படுத்த முடியும் இதே போல ஆறாம் அத்தியாயத்தில் பகவான் ஸ்ரீ கிருஷ்ணர் கூறுகின்றார் ஒரு யோகி என்பவர் அதிகமாக உறங்குவதும் இல்லை மிக குறைவாக உறங்குவதும் இல்லை அர்ஜுனன் என்பவர் ஒரு அசாதாரணமான மனிதர் அதனால் அவரால் உறக்கத்தை துறக்க முடிந்தது எங்கெல்லாம் கிருஷ்ண பகவான் பகவத்கீதையை உபதேசிக்கின்றாரோ அங்கெல்லாம் அர்ஜுனன் உடன் செல்வார் அர்ஜுனன் அர்ஜுனன் கிருஷ்ண பகவானின் மிக நெருங்கிய நண்பர் Later on in Bhagavad Gita Krishna will explain that he selected Arjuna to speak the Bhagavad Gita to because Arjuna is both a devotee and his friend. Bhagavad Gita in Pinnali Krishna Bhagavan kuripidugindrar இந்த பகவத்கீதையை உபதேசிப்பதற்கு ஏன் அர்ஜுனனை தேர்ந்தெடுத்தார் என்று சொன்னால் அர்ஜுனன் அவருடைய மிகச்சிறந்த பக்தர் அதே நேரத்தில் நெருங்கிய நண்பர் சம்டைம்ஸ்ட் and have a friendly relationship with krishna ivare nanangale ketpadarku nam brahmanargalaga irukka vendum endru nam sila samayangal nenaikkindrom aanal krishna bhagavan andha tagidhiyai kaanavillai 
இந்த ஞானத்தை கேட்பதற்கு ஒருவர் பக்தராக இருக்க வேண்டும் அவர் எந்த பிரிவை சேர்ந்தவர் என்பது முக்கியம் அல்ல one may be a brahmana but he may not be a devotee not all brahmanas are devotees to krishna oru var brahmanaraga irukkalam aanal bhaktaraga irpar endru kattayam alla so krishna is not so much inclined to that kind of person ipadi patta pirivinai padi krishnarkku adhiga akkarai kedaiyadu but arjuna is as we read in the purport shri prabhu explains arjuna is fully in krishna consciousness he is always thinking of krishna at every moment in the bhagavad gita munurayil sila prabhu padar kurippidugirar arjuna mega siranda bhaktar inneramum krishna bhaktiyil avan kelaithirundavar prabhu said either in waking or in sleep a devotee cannot be can never be free from thinking of krishna pro padar kurugirar oru var pidithirukkum bolado urakkathilo krishnarai nilaikamal irukka mudiyadu thinking of krishna's name or krishna's form or krishna's qualities or his pastimes krishnarin trunamam krishnarin roopam கிருஷ்ணரை <laughs> கிருஷ்ணரை பற்றி சிந்தனையில் நாம் இருக்க வேண்டும் ஆரம்பத்தில் அவருடைய பாத கமலங்களை நாம் தியானம் செய்ய வேண்டும் we have to approach krishna in a humble manner krishna bhagavanai nam panivana manapattayudan anuga vendum so we begin from his lotus feet avarudaiy paada kamalathil irundhu nam nammai valarthukolla vendum just like great devotee ambarish maharaj he was using all of his senses in different devotional activities pranatharku ambarish maharaj avarude ella pulangalaiyum indha bhakti sevayil eedupadithinar use this ears to hear the glories of the lord bhagavanin pugalai ketpadarkku tamadu kaadigalai payanpadithinar his eyes were observing the beauty of the deity of krishna அவருடைய கண்கள் பகவானின் விக்கிரகத்தின் அழகில் நிற்கிறிருந்தது his nose was smelling the flowers offered to krishna krishna பகவானுக்கு சமர்ப்பிக்கப்பட்ட மலரின் அருமணத்தை அவருடைய மூக்கு அனுபவித்தது his tongue was tasting the foodstuffs offered to krishna and chanting the names of krishna பகவானுக்கு சமர்ப்பணம் செய்யப்பட்ட பிரசாதத்தை சுவர்ப்பதற்கும் பகவானின் புனித நாமத்தை ஜெபிப்பதற்கும் அவருடைய நாக்கு பயன்பட்டது his legs were used in walking to the temple and circumambulating the deities and visiting holy places ஆலயத்துக்கு வரவும் ஆலயத்தில் வளம் வரவும் புனித ஸ்தானங்களுக்கு செல்லவும் அவருடைய கால்களை அவர் பயன்படுத்தினார் and he used his body to embrace the devotees avarudaiya udalai bhaktargalai anaipadarkku payanpaduthinar but the very first thing he would do would be to fix his mind on the lotus feet of krishna anal avar seidha mudal kaariyam avarudaiya manadai paramapurusha bhagavanin paada kamalangalil nilai nirthiyathu we have to understand krishna is a person and he has a transcendental form a very special form bhagavan or urvam avarkku unnadamana udal irukkirathu endradai nam purindukolla vendum and the devotees take pleasure in remembering this form of krishna and in thinking of the form of krishna பகவானின் இந்த உருவத்தை தியானிப்பதிலும் நினைப்பதிலும் பக்தர்கள் இன்பம் காண்கின்றனர் 
but also we want to serve that form of Krishna. Just like here in this center, there are many persons engaged in direct service for the deity. We see every day devotee offer the RT to the deities. And every day the deities dress is changed. And every day foodstuffs are offered at regular times throughout the day. Flower garlands are prepared and offered for the pleasure of the deity. Kirtan is performed for the pleasure of the deity. And when we sit here and speak on the scriptures, like tonight we're speaking on Bhagavad Gita, and in the morning we speak on Srimad Bhagavatam, we speak for the pleasure of the deity. So, generally, we are in the position of being the servant. The devotee thinks of himself as being the servant of Krishna. But here in this section, the verse we are reading on the Bhagavad Gita, we see Krishna has become the servant of Arjuna. And Arjuna is saying to Krishna, take the chariot over here. I want to see all the people who have come here to fight. Just like you get in a taxi, the taxi driver will say, where are you going? Where do you want to go? And the taxi driver drives to wherever you want to go, follows your instruction. So here in the battle on the battlefield at Kurukshetra, five thousand years ago, Lord Krishna, who is a Supreme Lord Rishi Kesha, the proprietor of the senses of everyone, has come as the chariot driver of Arjuna. And Krishna is taking instructions from Arjuna. Arjuna is telling him, take me there, I want to go over there, I want to see. So this is very interesting, very absorbing to think, how is it possible that Lord Krishna who is Bhagavan, the Supreme Lord, that he has become the servant of this Arjuna. This is a great mystery to those who don't know the science of devotion. Because we are thinking, 
You know, you tell me that Krishna is God, he's Bhagavan, right? He's the Supreme Lord. How is it? He's the servant, he's taking orders from this other person. We have to understand how Krishna relates to his devotees. And we are not just talking about any ordinary devotee like us, but we are talking about very special devotees like Arjuna, who the whole life has been a devotee, he has been a friend, he has been associated with Krishna. Krishna becomes the servant of his pure devotees like Arjuna. Arjuna ni pondra tamad tui meyana bhaktarikke Bhagavan seva garaga pani puri gindra. Because Arjuna has that love, he has that, that pure devotion for Lord Krishna. He is actually in samadhi, Prabhupada says here in the purport. Arjuna ni Bhagavan in tuya bhaktaraga hirinda ipad ipad tasun nalayai srila Prabhupada now when we hear samadhi, we think samadhi means, you know, you sit, you, you still, you close the eyes, you don't move, we're thinking, oh, that's samadhi. But in the science, in the process of bhakti yoga, samadhi is different. Samadhi means using all the senses and the mind in the service of Krishna. So this is a very, this is the highest samadhi. This samadhi means a fully absorbed in Krishna and not just thinking but in active service to Krishna. But here in this particular case, we see that Arjuna is taking the service from Krishna. It's Krishna who is giving the service and Arjuna is giving the order. So Krishna takes pleasure in that loving relationship with his devotees. He is a person, he has feelings, and he likes to have a loving relationship with his dear friends. So here, we are hearing how Krishna came onto the battlefield, taking the orders from Arjuna, bringing the chariot into the middle of the battlefield, and Arjuna will see, oh, he will see his grandfather Bhishma and his teacher Dronacharya. <laughs> So this will lead, of course, to the speaking of, of the Bhagavad Gita. Arjuna will become overwhelmed and he will look to Krishna 
and ask Krishna to be his teacher and to guide him and instruct him. Maybe he will take some questions. Do we have a microphone to pass over there for the mic for the lady? Pass the mic. Well, sometimes, you know, Krishna has other things to do at night. You know, he does have to go sometimes for Rasa Leela. But he never lets his mother know. And he always pretend, oh, I had a good sleep, oh, I had a... So at Kurukshetra, did Arjuna sleep? Well, he doesn't have to sleep. He said he conquered sleep, right? That is the point. Whether he sleeps or not, he's not controlled by it. He doesn't need to sleep. We are thinking we need to sleep. You know, some people think they need to sleep eight hours, ten hours a day. They think if they don't get enough sleep, they can't work, they can't do anything, and they want to sleep maybe eight hours or even ten hours a day. But of course, it's not necessary. It's a question of controlling the mind and conquering the mind. And then we can minimize the demands of the body. Srila Prabhupada would just sleep a couple of hours. And he would wake up in the middle of the night and then do his translation work. I've met people before, they told me they're not able to sleep, they haven't, there was one person I met, they hadn't slept for three years. One person came to Prabhupada and said, I can't sleep. Prabhupada said, come to our class. Come and sit in the temple room. So they brought the man into the temple room, told him, you sit down and sat with all the devotees and then it was a big, a long class and then after the class, the man said, oh, thank you, Swamiji, I had a nice, very good sleep. Swamiji 
but we often find devotees, sometimes we have a lot to do and we can really minimize our sleep without any great problem. Just like on Janmashtami day, you were up till midnight, right? After one of, maybe after one o'clock, before you broke your fast and then you take the sadam and it's about two o'clock in the morning and then you have Mongol at four, four thirty or five o'clock. So, so that was, you know, such a time and circumstances. We minimize our sleep without any great problem. We get by. It's some, just a matter of training and regulation, regulating the mind and the senses to do these things. Anyway, Bhagavad Gita said, don't sleep too much, don't sleep too little. And Srila Prabhupada recommended, he said we should, he said six hours is, should be sufficient. Now somebody may be doing a lot of very physical work, very tiring, they may need a little more rest. They may, may need to sleep seven hours or even eight hours. But it's also said that people who are working mentally, using their minds, it's even more tiring than physical work. So, you, 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 there are no hard and fast rules, but from Bhagavad Gita, Krishna said, don't sleep too much and don't sleep too little. If we sleep too little, then you can't stay awake. That's the problem. You go and drive your car, you didn't have a proper sleep, and you drive the car, you fall asleep driving the car, and you hit somebody. We've had these kind of incidents happen with devotees. They go on Sankirtan and they're working very hard, long hours trying to distribute books. Then they get in the Sankirtan vehicle and they're so tired they crash the vehicle. So they didn't get enough sleep. And if they sleep too much, they don't go on Sankirtan. Because they spend half the day sleeping. Mm -hmm. But oh, there's no time now, uh, no time for Sankirtan. So, there has to be some control, some regulation. Arjuna could control his sleep, therefore he got this name, Gudakesha. And certainly Krishna can also conquer sleep. Krishna is not controlled by sleep. If he does go to, lay down to sleep, it's for the pleasure of his devotee. That Mother Yashoda feels pleasure to see her son lay down and go to sleep. 
அவர் படுத்து உறங்குவது கூட பக்தர்களுக்கு இன்பம் அளிப்பதற்காகத்தான் உதாரணத்திற்கு அவர் படுத்து உறங்கினால் அவருடைய அன்னை யசோதாவுக்கு இன்பமாக இருக்கும் So it's all based on that loving relationship. It's not that they're controlled, it's not that they become tired. Devotees never tired when they're engaged in Krishna consciousness. But as soon as you forget Krishna and start thinking about the body, then you become tired. Okay, so we want to go on this evening because Today is also, we said it was the funeral, we lost two days ago, we had the very unfortunate departure of one of our members of the ashram, Bhakta Roshan, he left his body in hospital in Ipoh. And we want to, it's customary, when a devotee departs, we will speak something to glorify him and to praise him. We will have Smriti Sabha. நடைபெறும் So Bhakta Roshan came from Kulim, nearby Kulim, and he met the devotees and he began to associate with them for some time and then he moved into the temple and became a full-time devotee. Bhakta Roshan Kulim Nagarai Chandavar, Bhakta Ghanodu, Sula Andhukalikku Munpu Sadawasam Kondu, Many of you may know him, may have seen him. Sometimes he would serve in the gift shop there. So he was a very special young man. You know, usually people come to Krishna consciousness They're not very good students. They fail their exams, you know, lousy exams, no good marks, you can't get into college. What to do? Oh, I'll join Hare Krishna. But Russian wasn't like that. He had nine A's in his final year at school. He finished with nine A's. Now a student gets nine A's, you know, they could probably go to Germany and get a scholarship to go overseas. But Russian didn't want to do that. He moved in the temple, became a full-time devotee. So that's very special. It shows that he had a very strong attachment to Krishna and a very strong desire to practice Krishna consciousness. And uh, it certainly to his very great credit and great benefit that he did that. Because 
with the, after joining the Krishna consciousness movement, it's only been a few couple of years and he is departed from the world. Just imagine, if he had not joined the Krishna consciousness movement, if he had taken the, some scholarship and done some, entered into university or something, but still, you know, his destiny was such, his law, his fate was such, he was destined to give up the body. He's going to leave the world anyway. So what are you going to do? Is it better to study for a few years and get some piece of paper from a college? Or is it better to do service for Krishna? You are a lama, our now I think you, nearly all of you will agree that he did the right thing. If you know you're going to die, you're going to leave the world, what's the point of studying in a college? Better you dedicate that time for the service of the Supreme Lord. So Roshan was a very, very special young man that usually, you know, young men are very lively and talkative and but he was very quiet. He was a silent type. He didn't play around and fool around and waste his time. He used his, he used his time very carefully. So, Lord Krishna arranged to take him out from our association and certainly Lord Krishna must have some very wonderful plan for him. Krishna Bhagavan Namade Sadhavasatilirindu Avarai Prithrithindrar he will get the benefit of what he had been doing in his life as a devotee. He will go on in his Krishna consciousness. In Mahabharata, we hear about during the battle of Kurukshetra, Abhimanu was ruthlessly killed by many other great Maharatis. And so everybody lamented, the Pandavas lamented, oh, Abhimanu is gone, oh, we've lost our life. He said, you know, he was so dear, he was the son of Arjun and loved by all the Pandavas. So they approached the sages that, you know, this is so bad, we have lost Abhimanu, our life is useless. But the sages confided in them, they said, you don't have to worry about Abhimanu, he's gone to such a wonderful place now. He would never, Abhimanu would never want to come back to this place now. And I think similarly Roshan, he gets the fruit of his devotion. 
the few years which he spent as a devotee will bear fruit for him in his next life, that you have a great opportunity to get very good association and to go on and perfect his Krishna consciousness. So we ask all of you also offer your prayers for the benefit of Roshan. And the feast tonight is in his honor. We want to invite other speakers because there's many other devotees who know him better than me and they will speak something. <laughs> so we are very grateful as Maharaj said, uh, uh, Bhakta Roshan who joined here uh, to do uh, April 7, 1918, uh, 2018. So when he joined, actually, uh, he's like, you can't see he's a bhakta. He's just like a, a few years he's been practicing Krishna consciousness. As Krishna said, he just left water and then, then continued back again. So what I can see in past, uh, I think almost uh, one year, because after he got sick, uh, so mother took care of him and pulled him. So the while he was here, so his sadhana, his, his practice is uh, very remarkable because he wake up early, he wake up early around, I think, Mangalati is 5, but he wake up uh, for 3.30, uh, 4, and then he chants his round, and then he can chant together, do Mangalati. So this is, uh, his practice is, and also the other will follow, like Nanan also is one of the companions. So he also follow that. Because he's a good, uh, he has a good association. This association is very important to anyone who associates with him, so he will carry that mood of uh, serving the Lord. Our day is a